happy to say there are only four of us. <laughs> so you're, oh, you're halfway there, or maybe a third, because Megan might be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> It's just really good. It's so good to see so many people here and so many people from so long ago. It's like just mind blowing. And um, I know we all hate that, you know, it couldn't be a wedding and, or something, you know, but. We all get so busy, and um, we have so much family in Kentucky that you know wasn't able to come, and and I just really thank you guys for being here. And I, I I feel like I shouldn't be surprised because what you're already learning and you didn't already know is that our house was always filled with family, friends, childhood friends, parents, friends. You know, we just always had people in our house. Um, I remember also lots of dinner parties. Um, most of which my sister and I would um, spend the day cleaning the house for, or shining, uh, polishing silver for. Um, Toby and Sarah, you guys got off so easy. Um, <laughs> uh, or just, you know, setting the table, like that was our, you know, those were our jobs. Sometimes we would serve food. It was like, if you happen to be a special person there, getting to serve their food. Um, but, you know, again, she was an amazing cook, so she would always have some really elaborate menu planned. Uh, so if it wasn't extravagant, we knew at least it was going to be delicious. Um, and I also remember lots of uh, parties, costume and otherwise, um, that would go on well past my bedtime, being the youngest. And um, sometimes I would sneak out of bed and open the hallway door just to see what it was that uh, adults did at these bashes. Um, Love to just peek through and say, I'm never going to fall asleep. And then, um, so the entertaining bug really didn't end with my parents. Um, because I remember my three siblings um, doing their own entertaining at the house when my parents would be on trip. <laughs> but you were there. Um, I might have had some friends over sometimes too, but very small, tame groups. And, yes. uh, and, uh, and uh, it's truly still unknown to anyone exactly how many times the head broke off and had to be glued back on the Yadro statue of Dr. <laughs> so we don't really know. Um, I know that I learned from my siblings and when I did finally have a get together at my house, I took Rokin 500 times Don Quixote and the other Yadro that my parents had from Spain and put them all under the pillows in my parents' bed <laughs> so that they wouldn't get broke on my walk. <laughs> anyway. Um, Don Quixote has a stiff neck to this day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> poor guy. Poor guy. His sword broke off. Yeah, okay. Um, but anyway, so I, I may have failed to pick up my mom's amazing cooking skills, like Mary. Um, but I at least inherited uh, her appreciation for hospitality. Um, she showed me over and over again the importance and joy of sharing life with people. So I have a couple distinct memories of my mom when I was growing up. I have more than a couple, but I'm trying to keep mine to less than Megan. <laughs> <laughs> So she was well into her art business uh, by the time it was just Meg and I at the house. And one of my memories just of, of every day, really, was um, her at the telephone table in the kitchen in Saratoga with one hand with a phone and the other phone just, the other hand just twirling oh, yeah. this one piece of hair. Oh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Just for this one piece of it. And you could almost tell, like, I don't need to tell you, can I go over to speak to you? I, what do I, can I, no. She was like, she was twirling hair, you weren't going to be able to speak to her. So, <laughs> um, anyway, um, 
Let's see, other memories. Okay, so I have other memories of going back to school shopping with my mom. So when I was in like junior high, my favorite place to go was the Esprit outlet. And um, that was in San Francisco. And so my mom would take me, um, and the day would would be spent like hauling loads of clothes into the dressing room at Esprit outlet, and, and I'd have to model everything for my mom, and then I'd listen to her tell me exactly Kathleen, that piece will be so serviceable for you. <laughs> Is it gonna get somebody to look at me? You know, I mean, anyway, serviceable. And, um, maybe. Yeah. Um, so a minimum two hour shopping at this free outlet would be followed by lunch, just the two of us somewhere in the city. And um, on the drive home, my mom would inevitably say to me, um, oh, I just can't wait you get home and you're gonna show your father all the clothes you got, you'll model them for him. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I just imagined my dad trying to watch the 49er game where I was like, dad, look what I got. And he had three outlets. <laughs> and I really didn't want to because I just thought, Oh, my, we just spent this money on me, and it felt really like indulgent. And so I said that once to my mom, and she said, and I know that, you know, all my siblings have heard this. She said, Kathleen, your father never said one word to me about how I spend our money because he knows that I can stretch a dime to a dollar on any day. <laughs> I think that it was something I would credit my mom to, you know, teaching me how to be frugal without being a penny pincher, and teaching me how to treat myself or someone I love without going overboard. Um, there's so many memories, you guys. I mean, I'm, I'm literally just gonna list some because I know, you know, you'll know a lot of them. So maybe not this one, but um, I remember when I was young and she'd come say goodnight to me and she would sing lullabies to me. I mean, literally well beyond when I was small enough for her to hold me. She'd sit on my bed and I would just like, be like, how can I get in your lap? And I'd like get in her lap and make her hold me like this <laughs> and sing to me. And um, then I'd roll over and she'd scratch my back until I fell asleep or, um, I had a bunch of different birthdays, like you guys talk about birthdays, I mean talk about going all out, like I just feel like I pale in comparison as a mom. Uh, we would do scavenger hunts around the neighborhood, right, I know, I'm sure I ended up at the Castledons and the Colellas and the Burgettes all the time being like, do you have a 1948 penny? <laughs> um, Sleepovers galore, and one especially favorite um, birthday party, I think Stacy might remember, I don't know, was when we were all um, told to dress up as our moms. <laughs> We'd come, like all my friends came with like hats or like jewelry and like purses and like in their high heels. And we were in like third grade and oh, so she said, so all my friends came dressed as their moms. <laughs> I was dressed the best. <laughs> And then the sacrifice, you know, she just drove us everywhere. Um, she would drive me to soccer and to um, art and painting class and to dance and dance, dance for years until Megan and I could drive ourselves. Um, I also have memories of her, they are probably mostly when my dad was on trips where after she cooked and then cleaned, you know, the kitchen or, and there she'd be on the couch with a good book. Um, and a little bowl of ice cream. <laughs> and I was like, that's good. So that's like, she taught me how to relax too, right? Like, get a good book, get some ice cream, sit down at the end of the day and enjoy it. Um, I wasn't gonna talk about this, but our neighbors are here and they were asking me about it. We were talking about, um, I feel like we all have times where we um, feel like we weren't the easiest for mom. Not me that much. <laughs> but, um, I know Megan and I took turns hearing, don't give me that haughty look, young lady. <laughs> and that's not H-O-T-T-I-E. <laughs> and then according to 
my dad, most of my teenage years, I acted too big for my britches. <laughs> that had holes in them. <laughs> uh, but I think I aged my mom the most with like just uh, weird illnesses and things like that. Um, and the one that my neighbors were talking about was, you know, I was five or six years old in Saratoga and I ran through a sliding glass door on Mother's Day. And um, I feel like the story was that she wasn't supposed to be doing anything because it was Mother's Day, but she had to clean that door and I like ran through it. And um, had some stitches, and it was crazy. And the neighbors said that she came running. You know, to so I that was, you know, my dad was on a trip during that time. But I do remember um, my aunt Wilma bringing me a big Cadbury bar when I was in college. Yeah. So that was cool. Um, um, and then other weird things. I think I had labyrinthitis one Christmas yeah. in Capitola. I yeah. seem to love that labyrinthitis. That's so cool. And then. Um, but when I was visiting my, my grandma in Louisville, I, I, uh, I got toxic shock. And um, that was the summer before my sophomore year and I was flying there like I did every summer just to go see my nanny and all my cousins. And um, that was brutal. My mom and dad had to come out and uh, be with me. I was in the hospital for like 11 days and it was rough. And, um, but one of my most vivid memories of that time in hospital uh, is receiving a bouquet of yellow roses from my siblings all the way from California. And so here's where I'll wrap up. Probably the thing I appreciate most about my mom is how she and my dad instilled the importance of family in all of us. And going through the last couple of months, although really difficult, has been such an absolute blessing. Helping to care for my mom in her last couple of weeks of life alongside my siblings and my dad and helping to care for my dad since she died has really been a privilege. And I thank God for my 54 years with my mom. And I continue to thank him for the family I have because of her. Mm -hmm. Amen.